we're going to start, I'm going to move over to the mat. So in hopefully I'm just going to tell me, can you still hear me pretty good? Am I, am I coming through without an echo? Just a thumbs up would, would be good. Awesome. All right. Great. All right. So I can see everybody's kind of at their mats and got their stuff, which is awesome. Um, we're going to start in, we're actually, so have handy at least two blankets, one or two pillows, three pillows, and then I'm just going to kind of put them at the end of my mat right now. And we're just going to start, we're actually going to start in tabletop. Um, so that is hand planted. Um, we're just going to move really quickly in and out of some cows and cats. So inhale, heart forward, tailbone back, and then exhale, press. Great. Feel free to just really gently move your neck. Inhale, heart forward. Right, you can see that kind of curve in the spine and then exhale for us. And then toes touch knees wide. Bring yourself down to the mat for a really gentle child's pose. I'm not going to bring myself all the way down, otherwise you're, um, it's going to sound like I'm talking into, my, into a muffled pillow. So feel free to bring your forehead down. Right, and just ease into this. You can draw the knees a little wider. You can sway your hips back and forth. Release your heart into the mat a little bit. Okay, and breathe. And we will ground and kind of settle into our practice here. So go ahead and take a deep breath in through your nose. Open your mouth, exhale, let it go. Okay, inhale. And release. Deep breath in. And exhale. In the next couple of breaths, you find your own yoga breath. So feel free to bring the lips together, seal them if that feels good, and you can breathe in and out your nose. Okay, feel free to bring your ujjayi breathing into this practice, especially if you would like a little bit of heat building. So that's the constriction of the throat or feels like a constriction of the throat. And it's like you're pulling and pushing the air kind of through the back part of the throat. Just set, take a moment to set your intention for practice today, and that could be anything. It could be a word, a phrase, maybe it's a person, maybe it's a mantra or a goal you've been working towards or just being here in this moment right now. Stay in your child's pose, but just walk your fingertips towards the front edge of the mat as close or as close as you can get to the edge, right? So you're just walking your fingertips, getting long through the spine and long through the arms. Okay, take a deep breath in. And then on your exhale, walk your fingertips a little or a lot to the right. So again, just moving as much as feels good in your body, creating some space between the ribs on the left-hand side. Beautiful. Inhale your fingertips back to center and then exhale off the left hand side again, moving as much or as little as feels good, creating space between the ribs on the right and just noting any sensations in your body and avoiding the trap of um, judging those sensations or attaching a story to those sensations. For, so for the next 80 minutes or so, you're just gonna do yoga in the body that you have in the room right now. Okay. Inhale, takes you back to center. Okay. Rise up to your tabletop again, and then go ahead and move through a few of those cows and cats. Now you can keep your knees wide and just notice a difference in the base of the spine. Inhale, remember, inhale, you're dropping your belly, your heart is pressing forward, you get that nice deep curve in the spine, and then exhale, you're pressing, really sending the shoulder blades up, 
and exaggerate these movements. These will be kind of the mo most intense movements. Um, we might do this one more time as we come out of the next se sequence that we're going to be doing. Um, but exaggerate and get as much movement as feels good. Right, adding barrel rolls and whatever other movement. It doesn't have to be a yoga pose. If it feels good in your body, go ahead and just move into that space. Maybe you're holding in one area a little longer and breathing the whole time. Okay, so feel free to continue that movement. I'm going to um, invite you to peek up at the screen here as I set up this first pose. So the first pose that we're going to be do, doing is a belly down pose, and it's called um, surfer pose, and it's going to be combined with um, what uh, a pose called half frog or uh, half frog pose. So what I want you to do is you're going to take whatever blanket you have, and then, like I said, they don't have to look like mine, but you're going to try to get the same um, the same level of, of lift, if you will. So I'm going to open mine up to kind of a, a larger rectangle and then just lie it down so that it starts to create. So what I want to create is kind of a, a place for my body to be and then also a place for, like, so you're kind of just lifting yourself up as you make your way down to where the legs are going to be. Um, in addition, so if, you, if it's just one blanket, like you're using just one blanket, that's totally fine as well. I'm actually going to remove one because I want to I want to show you what I want you to do with the other. So either with a pillow, all those extra pillows you have, or with another blanket, I want you to set yourself up so that you have a, the ability to lift up your knee when you take it into the frog. So I'm actually going to stand up and show you what ultimately you're going to be doing. So we're going to be laying down like this and the tops of your feet are gonna be on the bolster, right? Your head's gonna be up here. At some point after we calibrate this, I'm gonna have you take one of your knees out to the right, and then you're gonna be bringing your left ear, and you're gonna be holding here for a little bit. We're then gonna drop it down again, recalibrate, and go to the other side. So, that, so that's what it looks like, but you're on the floor. So we're gonna start by when you get into this pose, you're just going to drop your feet on top of that bolster and then bring yourself down. Right. Now you can have, I'm gonna take the right knee out first um, just because that's what we're gonna do. We're not gonna do it right now, but I want you to be prepared to have that right knee out and you're gonna be having the left ear down and looking to the right. That way we're all on the same page. But to start, have both feet on the bolster and then bring yourself down, but have your arms outside, not underneath your head. Don't you use, use something to support you, like an extra blanket or a pillow, not your arms, because you don't want yourself to get into that um, tough situation where you have pins and needles, right? So you want to make sure that you that every part of your body is feeling really good. Um, you don't want to have any any red flags or green flags right now because we're gonna be holding this for about five minutes and then we're going to be moving but each of the poses are going to be anywhere from five to ten minutes long so take a deep breath in i'll do the same <laughs> and then exhale right into this pose so the feet are lifted up on that um, bolster great and then take a deep breath in open your mouth exhale let it go Great. And do that as many times as you need to fully kind of relax. Great. And take the next couple of breaths to do a body scan and just note any areas of sensation. Great. And without judging that sensation, also note if there's a position shift that you can make in order to relieve it. Right. It's okay to move. It's okay to, it's, I'm giving you permission to move, especially um, at the beginning, you know, at the, couple first couple breaths of the pose now if you're feeling really really good um then just kind of melt down into that space great if you need to move your hips i don't you know take the wiggles and the in the um, um the fidgets don't you know they're not it's not a negative thing it's just your body unwinding um we do it at night tend, we tend to have a ritual um uh, that we do before we actually fall asleep. And if, if you are anything like me, it looks something like sleeping on my back and then on my front and then right leg out and then left leg out and then I slip back over. And it is literally the unraveling and unwinding of 
your spine. It's like you're unwinding, you literally are unraveling your day um, in order to fully rest and you find that deep sleep. So folks who are new to restorative yoga, we, I talk through the beginning part. Sometimes I'll do a guided visualization. Um, for this pose, I'm going to be in, in any position too, too long. So I'm just going to guide you in and kind of let you be there. And then we'll move to the next pose. All right, take a deep breath in. 
a slow exhale out. And then go ahead and draw your right knee up to the right side. So if you think of, um, this is called half frog pose. So you want as good, as much of a 90 degree as you can get with that knee um, and hip and ankle as you can. And make sure um, if you need, some people don't need, but if you do need, put a um, blanket underneath the knee. And if you need to prop yourself up even more, maybe even a pillow, um, it really depends on, um, this is a hip opener, so it, it really depends on your, your, the anatomy of your skeletal, of, your, of where your hip socket kind of lies. So um, make yourself comfortable again, though. So again, taking it out and then making, taking it to a point that feels really, really good in the body. And then a deep breath in. And then open your mouth, exhale. And if you notice any sensation in your body that is just just surely because you are you have moved your leg out to the right, breathe into the the area that has the sensation, and just kind of coaxing it in, and inviting it to open and release.
Just we'll take a deep breath in through your nose. Open your mouth, exhale, let it go. So without rush and as much ease as you can, in the next couple of breaths, you're gonna bring that right leg down and we're gonna recalibrate at the same time as you bring that right leg down, however, you can shift your ear to the opposite side. And that'll keep your, um, give you the same amount of time on both sides. For So we're going to take the leg down. You're going to recalibrate for a couple of breaths. If you need to shift the blanket that held your knee up to the other side, this is a good kind of time to do it as well. Just gonna bring it over to the left hand side. Beautiful. When you're ready, you can take the left knee out to the left and set yourself up for that opening on the left hand side. Great. So block, bolster, blanket. Just remember each side is different. So you might need it to feel to look a little different, that bolstering to look a little different. So it's left knee out to the left. And you should be looking towards that side as well. And then deep breath in through your nose. Open your mouth, exhale, let everything melt back to the space you were right before you heard my voice.
deep breath in through your nose. Open your mouth, exhale, let it go. And slowly and with ease in the next couple of breaths, you can drop the left leg back onto the pillow. And again, we're gonna hold here to recalibrate. So go slow, breathe, kind of melt back into that, that space. This is um, kind of a readjustment of the sacrum. Great, and in the next couple of breaths, you're gonna start to just think about um, moving again, right? So we, the best way out of this pose is to gently press yourself into a very easy child's pose. Um, always taking at least three to five breaths in, ev in every transition that you move into. Right. And then from that child's pose, you can then bring yourself up to your tabletop again and move in and out of tabletop. And I'll cue you through all of those poses. So really, child's pose is the next pose that you're headed to. And in each pose, you're reacclimating. And kind of reminding your body how to be in that new position. Take a few more breaths in this pose. And when you're ready, you can start to make your way up to your tabletop again. When you get to your tabletop, you're gonna to start to slowly move through those cats and cows again. And however feels good, remember, um, 
when you're opening up, when you're sending your heart forward in the cow pose, that tends to be a really nice place to take a deep breath in. And then when you're pressing and you're crunching, finding your cat's pose, that's a really nice place to kind of let your air, let the air out. Um, but in restorative yoga, more so than probably any yoga, just breathe um, and make sure it feels good in your body, however you're doing it for yourself. Great. And when you are done or you feel like you're complete with the movement, you're just going to take a seat and I'm going to kind of give you a little demo on the next pose. The next pose is going to be a, a kind of a grouping of poses um, using the same kind of prop situation as well. However, the um, we're going to use the props completely differently. So um, just because I know that most of you have more like pillows and blankets with you, um, I'm going to set up, I'll set it up with using kind of the bolsters and the blocks just to show you what we're doing. And then I'll show you how to use the, um, the home props um, when you're done. So when I set this, uh, or when you eventually set this up at the studio, um, you're going to be using blocks. And the best way to kind of use the blocks, these just happen to be funky blocks where they don't, they're not exactly um, they have kind of like a rounded front, but either way, you're going to kind of create a stair stepper. So if you do have blocks, you feel free to use your blocks in this way. And then you're just going to lay the bolster on top of that. And we're going to be using this for, for the next kind of 25 minutes ish of poses. That's great. If you have the bolster and the prop and the blocks, if you don't, what I'd like to do is take a blanket and bring it kind of into a pretty tight um, square. And then maybe take the next one or another blanket, make a rectangle, again, starting it at the top. So you're creating this kind of, again, that kind of slanted bridge, and then you can put your pillow on top of that. So that'll create pretty much the same kind of, kind of um, shape that you want to get into. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to start laying down in what's called a reclined Shavasana pose. Now, if you have, so if you have this um, and you want to kind of lift your head up even more, you might even want to put a blanket kind of right up the, so get, making everything a little bit higher on the slant, farther away from your head. All right. Next thing we're going to do is get your six bones right up against that pillow and then go ahead and look down. All right. And now, for, for me, I can feel that it's really pressing up under my shoulders, but my head is almost feeling a little cinched or uh, kind of um, unsupported. So if you scoot that little blanket up, give it a little roll, a little tuck underneath your chin, you're then able to um, give yourself a little bit of support. So I'm just going to talk you through. So that's going to be pose number one. When we shift, we're going to be shifting into something called into a twist. And I'm going to show you how to do it now, and then I'll show you how to do it again. It's just easy, easier to see. Um, I always say a message repeated is a message remembered. So what we'll do is you're going to be in the same kind of position. However, you're now going to be taking your legs out to the side. Now you're, we're going to, let's say, start with the left hip. The left hip is right up against the bolster. Um, bend into your knees. Make sure you have something that you can bring into your knees and then you're going to twist towards that um, the structure that we created over here well, as you twist towards you're going to have your right hand on one side and your left hand on the other side and you're just going to lower yourself down so this should be super comfortable it's actually one of my favorite poses in all of the poses that i that i teach in restorative yoga so that's twist on this side i'm going to call it we're going to kind of kind of bring, i usually just bring myself up and over and then I do the same thing, twist, opening up so right hand is on the right, left hand, and then lowering myself down. And then we will end back up, back in the recline Shavasana. But we're going to start there. Feel free to take anything under your legs. Remember, we did, you're, you're going to need one in between your knees, so you can always kind of prop that underneath your knees right now. And then just lower yourself down. If you have, so 
So this is really opening through the heart and the shoulders. Um, it's a, a huge external rotation. So if that feels really intense to you, I would recommend that you bring your elbows in closer to the body and let your full, the back of your arms rest down uh, closer to your body. That'll give you a little less tweaking in the shoulder. If you like that openness, feel free to take your arms way out, right? And that will completely release and open through um, kind of the front side of your chest. Now, just a, a little um, for my folks who know, well, it doesn't matter if you know massage or not, but opening up the front, if you have a lot of tension in your neck, and in your in the shoulders and the back side, opening up through the front is actually a little a little massage hack that um, that I've learned. Where if you if you imagine like that those muscles right above um, your chest, like right almost like right where your armpit is, but then come in a little bit. That opening of those muscles actually helps to release the back muscles. Um, so if that's something that you experience you might try you might try having your arms a little bit wider and open All right so just take a deep breath in exhale release feel free to cover yourself up with a blanket always um this yoga is always i think received better when you're feeling really cozy and then melt into the earth Right, and so the your sits bone, the, right above your sits bone, is a part of your the spine that is called your sacrum, which is the five fused bones, and it can twist a little bit. But imagine when you're sitting in this position, imagine that that flat part of the bone is pressing its way down into the center of the earth, and it is the place of your connection to the earth and a place of grounding. I always find when I am feeling a little bit um, frazzled, uh, if I imagine my connection to the earth seems to kind of relieve some of that. So in particular in restorative yoga, when you're trying to ground yourself, um, I always imagine like the earth coming up to meet me um, and support me where I'm at. So I invite you to imagine that as well kind of literally melting into the spot that you're in right now. You can bring your shoulder blades together underneath your body, lift your heart up towards the ceiling, take a deep breath in, and then open your mouth and exhale, release, let it go. And do that as many times as you need to really release. You're letting go of anything that isn't serving you, isn't helping you any kind of frustrations, any thoughts. And being really gentle on yourself if for whatever reason those thoughts come back in. So one of the best tools I've learned for meditation is to be, to treat myself like, like I was a child learning a new, something brand, brand new, which is exactly what you're learning if you're just starting in, in meditation, right? It's to be really, really gentle. You wouldn't call yourself names if you were trying to teach a young child something, or you wouldn't call that child names. So just easing into the noticing if you move out of whatever meditation practice you're in, and then just gently bringing yourself back to either the breath or a, vi a visual that you have or the mantra that you had at the start of class.
Take a deep breath in through your nose. Open your mouth, exhale, let it go. And just bring yourself back to enough awareness and enough movement in your body so that you can gently bring yourself to like left or right hand side and bring yourself up enough to get into the first twist pose. So remember, I'll talk you through it. Um, as you make your way up, you're going to, we'll start with the with your left hip being the hip that is up against the, the bolsters and the blankets. So if you bring your left legs out, you're then gonna bend your knees, put something between your knees, twist towards the bolster, have hand on each side and then lower yourself down so that the left ear is on the bolster or at least the ear, it's the same, um, the opposite ear of the way that you're being saying, I think it's ultimately what's in it. So if your left ear is down, no, actually it's the same ear as the hip that is um, on the bolster. Okay, just take it easy, move in as slow or as, and just remember you, uh, you don't want to, I can see that some people are like laying on their arm. If you bring, you want to bring the arms so that they're opposite each other or opposite each of the things so that you're not restricting any of the blood flow. So if you're facing it, you have your right hand on the right hand side and left hand, and then you can bring yourself down. And that way you can make sure that you're not kind of stopping any of the blood for too long so that you get a, um, you know, pins and needles or a numbness in your, in your body part or your arm. And it's not always easy to cover yourself up, but definitely give yourself a little, a little bit of movement so that you can feel nice and cozy. And then again, make your way back to the space you were right before you heard my voice.
Great. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Open your mouth, exhale. Great. Just bring yourself back to enough awareness of body and breath to move yourself to the opposite side. So the opposite twist. So again, bringing yourself up. You can kind of bring your legs up and over and then reposition into the, into the twist on the other side. Okay, if you need to do any other movement in order to get into position, feel free to do that as well. And then lower yourself back down. Bring yourself right back to that spot of deep meditative healing and relaxation.
Okay, take a deep breath in through your nose. Open your mouth, exhale, let it go. Okay, we're gonna move into our final position that's gonna take us through the remainder of class. It's basically gonna be exactly the way we started. So you're gonna, not in the, the whole class, but this particular set of positions, you're just gonna bring yourself back so that your sits bones are on the bolster and then lay back onto the bolster or sits bones are at the bolster and you're gonna lay back onto the bolster. But feel free to use the blanket that you've been using between your knees, underneath your knees, and even an option to take what's called um, Baddha Konasana, um, better known as um, ba uh, bound angle or butterfly pose, where you bring the soles of your feet together and have your knees out wide. <laughs> you can drop, put something underneath your knees. Right now, that actually might feel really good just to, to not have to, something to support your knees. We did a lot of hip opening and you might be ready to just kind of to be in that position, but not everybody has that, that ability or that flexibility in their body. So feel free to bolster yourself up under each of the outer edges of your thigh and your knees if that is some, a pose that you want to take. Sorry, folks, and it looks like I have been um, having a little difficulty staying uh, connected. So I promise that even if I do cut out, um, I will come back by uh, the end of class to get you out of this pose. So just deep breath in, open your mouth, exhale, let it go. Great job, the shoulder blades together, lift your heart up towards the ceiling, do that again, deep breath in. Final time, let everything melt. Imagine you feel my hands pressing down on your shoulders and releasing that your um, self into the earth, just kind of melting.
Okay, take a deep breath in through your nose. Open your mouth, exhale, let it go. Okay, take tiny movements with your fingers, your toes. Circle out your wrists, your ankles. Let your head fall gently from side to side. You can draw your arms overhead, toes towards the opposite side, take a deep breath in, engage all of your muscles, and then open your mouth, exhale, and everything go. And if it feels good, you can slide the soles of your feet to the mat, bring your knees up towards the ceiling, give yourself some windshield wiper movement back and forth. And when you feel complete, you can bring yourself down to the fetal position to either the right or the left hand side. Okay, and then just breathe there for a few moments, kind of acclimating again, speaking in, now letting your body really marinate and integrate what you just did. With your eyes still closed and as little movement as possible, you're going to press your way up to a seat, a comfortable seat. So that can be on a bolster or blanket or pillow if you want to. <clears throat> when you feel comfortable, you're just going to bring your hands to press, bring your thumbs to your heart. Your way of sealing in all the good work that you did. Just take a deep breath in through your nose. A long, slow exhale out your mouth. Beautiful. The light, the love, the peace, the power in me honors that same place of light, love, peace, and power in each of you. Thank you so much for honoring me with your practice tonight. Namaste.